If any of you read my bio over on my website, whistletutor.com, or if you've been listening to me play for a while, uh, you probably heard me talk about how I got started playing, which was by sitting in the basement of my dad's pub in New York listening to old Pogues tunes. A friend of mine got me into the Pogues and happened to be a fellow playing the whistle on there, and somebody gave me a tin whistle as a souvenir from Ireland, and so I kind of just sat around and banged on it until I could figure out a couple of tunes. Um, and I had a few requests for Pogues tunes, and I, I just, well, I'm really sticking with the jigs and the reels, more of the traditional stuff. Uh, but now I'm playing with a group called the Nashville Celts, and we happen to do this uh, particular Pogues song called Streams of Whiskey, uh, which was sort of an anthem for me growing up. I thought, well, I may as well make a cool uh, tutorial about it if I can. Um, most folks probably just cover the basic melody part that Spider Stace used to play. I figured I'd do it a little bit differently, because not everybody does the exact same arrangement. Hopefully, people try to mix it up if they play that song. Uh, so I'm going to play all three parts, the, the whistle part for the Spider Stacy played the, the melody there, and then actually the melody of the verse and the chorus, so those three parts in there. And if you want to play those um, in, in your arrangements, uh, hopefully this will help you out a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to start with the basic uh, whistle part that leads off, that kicks off the song, if you're familiar with it. Uh, that's the whistle part, and accordion part, and all that stuff. So um, play that first. I'm going to play it down low. Um, and I'll talk about why I'm doing that in a second, but it actually jumps up the octave, but I'll start playing the basic melody down low. So here's the beginning, the, the beginning of the song, which is just the instrumental bit. So that's the basic melody. When I'm playing it live, uh, for one, I play it up the octave because it's uh, a bit more uh, shrieky and, uh, and ear-splitting that way, which kind of works if you're playing in a rock band like I do from time to time. Um, so I'll play it up, up at the octave. Uh, hopefully I won't uh, distort the mic too badly or uh, wake the neighbors. Uh, I'll also play a bit of the, uh, the ornaments in there as well. So that's the instrumental part. Uh, one of the things you probably heard me do there was a bit of a crayon on the D. I just thought it sounded kind of cool, so that's why I do that. I always mix those up too. Um, there's not a whole lot of ornaments on this. It's, it's just kind of a, a fun, uh, happy kind of melody. Um, the reason why I don't play it up the octave when I'm practicing, again, is just because it's really shrill. That, especially that, that third D, which is uh, enough to wake the dead, unfortunately, so I try to avoid that when there are other people within a few miles of me or unless I'm on stage. So practice it down low so you don't drive people crazy. Something like that. So that's the... Um, the, the main melody part that the whistle usually plays in a song if you're playing it exactly like they did. What I'm going to do now is cover the verse and the chorus, uh, in case you wanted to play that and do a bit of a different arrangement. So, um, if you haven't listened to the song, check it out. It's online. It's on YouTube here somewhere. Uh, I'm sure if you search for Pogue Streams of Whiskey, you'll get it, if you want the lyrics to it. But the, uh, the melody for the uh, verse you know, goes like this. Um, and in this case, because of the whole octave situation, I'm going to start off jumping the octave a bit. Um, so I'll explain that afterwards. So pretty similar. Uh, to the instrumental bit. I'm sure that's where they got their, their, little, uh, their little interlude there. Um, but a bit of a different melody. So if I were playing that um, with more ornamentation, again, it's a pretty simple bit, so I probably wouldn't do a whole lot, but something like this, maybe. Something like that. And again, that's when you can play up the octave. It doesn't hit that third D, so it's not quite as shrill. Um, but no sense uh, driving yourself nuts too early on, uh, so practice it down low. So here's the chorus. Uh, now, in this case, I am actually going to jump the octave a bit, because it gets really shrill into that third D. Uh, so I'm going to play it down low, and I'll kind of explain what it would be if you were playing it 
in the proper octave. So here's the chorus. So what I did there is um, I started off on the A, the middle A there, and then kind of jumped jump down the octave. When really, if you're playing in the proper octave, I'm going to try to do this without making it too shrill, but... And then you go up to the third D there. So you can hear how, how squeaky that is. So that's why, like I said, when I practice it, I just jump the octave, and it really doesn't matter, the fingerings are the same. Something like that. So that's how you can practice it. That's how I like to practice anyway. So it's not just uh, too ear bleeding. So play with that one if you want. It's a great old song. Um, whether you play it or not, look up the Pogues version of it because it's a pretty awesome song and one that uh, that uh, got me through high school pretty much. So uh, great song. Check it out. <laughs>